Next up we have Carl Simich, Managing Director of Sandfire Resources. As Managing Director of Sandfire since 2007, Carl initially led the company through a decade of growth, mining the world-class De Grusse copper mine in Western Australia. With this behind us, the global expansion has firmly begun through the acquisition of Matza copper mine in Spain and the development of the Matteo copper mine in Botswana. So no doubt some further big plans ahead. Please welcome Carl Simich. Uh, thanks, Digby, and um, um, welcome everyone this afternoon. Um, I look forward, I think it was, I feel like it's my 35th diggers and dealers, um, although I've been reminded it's um, not quite that many. Um, I'm also going to be showing you a couple of home videos today, so um, um, I really do look forward um, to giving you an update. I would like to think that the most significant thing that's happened, Digby's just mentioned it, but in the last 12 months, uh, Sandfire has gone through an absolute um, substantial transformation as a business and very much moving itself into the uh, global base metals and particularly copper space um, on a global platform. So I look forward to giving you this, this presentation today and starting off with um, turning up the tempo a little bit. It's uh, fun to see what the wonderful women and men have been up to at Sandfire over the last 12 months um, and to give you that, that uh, intense view that we've got. It's quite exciting where we are at the moment. <laughs> we turned the volume down, so hopefully it wasn't too bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, look, from our perspective, it, it really has been an exciting time. It's been absolutely transformational. We've been um, extraordinarily busy. I left diggers and dealers on Tuesday last year to jump on a plane and go to Spain to be part of the due diligence team for that MATS acquisition. I'll touch on that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, we are one of the largest copper producers listed on the ASX. Um, we've got a portfolio of assets that we're rolling out. Um, it just seems to get busier, busier and busier, and certainly we are in transformation mode. Um, Copper, you know, it's come off the boil a little bit in the last little, um, last little bit, but it's still running at extraordinarily high um, long-term global prices around those mid-$3 uh, dollars a pound, and it is an absolutely critical, critical mineral, um, as we know, uh, for the future, whether it be um, um, urbanisation, whether it be electrification, and certainly, um, um, the, you know, the, the catchphrase of the world at the moment, decarbonisation. Um, it is the third largest um, 
um, metal in demand that gets consumed globally. So it is absolutely critical and it's probably the single um, most significant commodity that will um, um, cause a delay in decarbonisation. So copper's right at that forefront. And so it's wonderful be, to be here and to be part of the solution um, and to be part of the future in a copper-focused uh, company. Growth, in terms of growth um, opportunities for Sandfire, we sit um, basically within a mineral endowment of somewhere in the order of uh, six million tonnes of contained copper in, in, in mineral resources and copper equivalent. So we've really got that opportunity through these um, uh, projects, whether it be in Western Australia, in Botswana, in Spain, and also in the US to actually grow off the back of those uh, wonderful projects. Uh, we are taking the Mateo project in Botswana into production uh, next year. Exploration, we have a significant portfolio. We're one of the largest tenement holders in Australia, certainly in Western Australia as well, in and around the Degrassa region. Uh, we, we are by far the largest tenement holder in the Kalahari Copper Belt with some 35,000 square kilometres of mineral endowment holdings um, in Botswana and into Namibia. And I think um, uh, there's such a significant opportunity there uh, not to be underestimated. And we are one of the largest tenement holders uh, with our acquisition of Matsa in the Iberian Pyrite Belt, a mineral belt that's been uh, producing metals for the last 5,000 years. Um, from an exploration perspective, um, we're at large exploration spenders, we'll continue to be. Um, it will be success driven um, and we'll spend somewhere in the order of um, 35 to 45 million US dollars um, in our annual exploration budget. And what we have done over the last little period of time is, is really increase that talent pool, increase, increase that inclusivity and diversion in our organisation and truly develop a global business operating model. And that's what we've been working on hard and we continue to do that. Just a couple of key highlights over the last 12 what we call momentous months. Um, the acquisition of Matza um, was an extraordinary transaction. Um, it is definitely the new cornerstone asset of our business. It's large, it's got huge potential, it's got lots of optimization um, in that, uh, um, that, that asset. Uh, it's been fully integrated over the last five months of ownership. Um, but just going back to the transaction itself, it was something, to put it in perspective, was a transaction that was three times the market capitalisation of the company. It was an all cash transaction. Um, it was 10 times the enterprise value of our business at the time. Uh, we raised 130% of our market capitalisation in the space of four hours in terms of equity underwrites. Um, a, you know, a call out to our advisors, Macquarie and City, who did a lot of work there, equity raising, and our wonderful banking syndicates. We also secured a, a, almost an 800 million US dollar debt facility for that transaction as well, and it was done without anyone knowing. Um, we maintained, uh, continue to maintain a very disciplined capital structure as we sit here today with some $460 million in the bank treasury, all US dollars being reported here. Our net debt profile is just over $300 million, so we've had that disciplined approach. In the last 12 months, we've produced an uh, order of magnitude of close to 123,000 tonnes of copper. Um, equivalent uh, in those numbers. Revenue pre-deductions was over a billion dollars US and those margins as you can see on the slide there, 59% at an operating level, um, a little bit lower at a corporate level but very strong EBITDA margins um, and I'd just like to call out just the wonderful operations um, and personnel delivery at the DeGrasser operations here in Western Australia. It was extraordinary, probably two thirds to three quarters of that margin for the co course of the last year. Um, and we continue to work forward on our aspirations. We were already developing the Botswana project, the Mateo project, which means new beginning in Setswana uh, is essentially the development of one, it's in fact two open pits, um, the second one to be um, green lighted shortly, but essentially a 3.2 million tonne um, first operation and then being expanded into 5.2 million tonnes, um, but that is rapidly moving forward. And, and we invest heavily in our people and our culture um, and our global operating systems and obviously uh, making sure we do this properly and sustainably um, and we're effectively a copper producer. Just on the, on the um, uh, just thinking about copper a bit for the moment, as I said, um, it is such a significant metal for the long term. Uh, there's only there's only a few copper um, companies presenting at this conference. Essentially, it's uh, uh, many other battery metals and also the gold and the nickel guys. But uh, essentially, just to put it in some perspective, um, S&P put out a little report recently which we think has actually got some real um, substance to it. Um, we've heard about, a lot about it, but we are really talking about copper 
um, supply requirements or de demand requirements, sorry, uh, being, you know, um, almost double where they are at the moment. So by 2025, 2035, they are calling it almost being a requirement of 50 million tonnes of copper uh, required annually. And that's up from where it is about 25 million tonnes at the moment. So we're going to come into this very, very challenging time in terms of supply um, um, requirements um, to meet that demand. So chronic shortfalls are estimated. We've gone through a journey of a junior explorer into a single mine company, focusing our growth now, emerging producer, and we are looking to uh, becoming a global uh, mid-tier producer, and dare I say it, one of these days we'd love to be a tier one uh, base metals and copper producer. This graph is really indicating a couple of scenarios that in 2025 they're looking at that deficit um, um, more so along those, that orange line of a large copper deficit looming as we move forward. Just want to touch out on some of the um, wonderful things that have been happening. Obviously, licensed to operate, DSG um, and HSEC, critical to the business, but a couple of key merits. We have now in our business order of magnitude about 4,000 people that operate um, um, and wearing the Sandfire uh, branding globally. Obviously, lots of different uh, people. We all operate under the one set of values and we have a particular culture, but within that, we have obviously um, um, unique um, operations and, un and, and satisfaction of unique um, way people do things. But with those people, we've still been able to operate safely and that's important. Just to call out a couple of key things in Botswana, um, we are spending a lot of time in many community programs and it's very important in a very um, a difficult part of the world in terms of you know, uh, services to people and really focusing heavily on children and, um, and people that have disadvantages, so education and children. And another wonderful thing we're doing in Spain at the moment is the um, Mining Water Living Lab project, which is essentially at the Matza project, they're all but operating on just about, just under 100% recyclable of water in their mine operating project. So they're, they're really looking at where they can potentially get the whole way up to being 100% recyclable water in operation. So a really high 90% of um, met, uh, water recycling, recycling in, at the Matza project. So Matza in Spain, just to give you a highlight, the last quarter was a very strong one for us. So we were over um, our production guidance and for the um, essentially for the five months that we owned the asset. Um, you know, zinc obviously plays an important part here. Um, not to be discounted, it probably could be converted. Uh, just under 50% of zinc production is, is essentially almost a copper equivalent. And it gives you a bit of a sense of it that for the, for the five months that we own the asset, it produced just under uh, 50,000 tonnes of uh, copper equivalent um, when, you, when you add the numbers up. Obviously, in the last little while, everyone's seen cost pressures. We, we are no orphan there, and we've also seen cost pressures there as well, coming through um, in many of those input costs, energy prices particularly. Um, but we seem to be managing those reasonably well, uh, certainly from a physical consumption perspective, uh, very, very um, um, efficient operations. Um, so very proud of the people there. Over the next couple of years for Matza, certainly for Financial 23, on a copper equivalent basis, seeing probably somewhere in the high 90s, um, 100,000 tonnes of copper equivalent or thereabouts, and certainly a very much a, a, a dominant copper proposition in the business and in our portfolio. Uh, we expect over a longer period of time, it's always challenging when you acquire an asset um, and the previous owner is probably um, underspent in terms of capital and, um, and probably hasn't quite done the preparatory work for the long life of the mine. So we're, we're inheriting that, we're working through it um, and we ultimately see this project as easily uh, being able to operate at in excess of 100,000 tonnes of copper equivalent uh, consistently and on an ongoing basis. And we do also see a wonderful um, um, opportunities for enhancements, improvements as well. Um, I've got another little video here because it's going to make my life easier and I've got another one after this, but essentially what this picture is, is um, in, in, draped here in red across the uh, page here in Spain and Portugal to the left is uh, what's called the Iberian Pyrite Belt. It's a mineral belt that's been mined for the last 5,000 years. Everything you see in um, either a white tenement shape or a coloured one is owned 100% by Sandfire and we are the dominant uh, tenement holder in the Iberian Pyrite Belt. A couple of other key features is to the right, um, you'll see um, Cobralus Crucis, which is a little blue dot there, a mine uh, that's owned by First Quantum. Right up next to our projects there in orange, you'll see Rio Tinto, where Rio Tinto, um, um, the Rio Tinto mine is operating and owned by Atalaya, um, but is where Rio Tinto, the giant, started its life many, um, however many years ago, over 100 years ago. 
Um, and further afield, as you go into Portugal, you'll see another very good VMS mine called Nevis Corvo, owned by Lundin. Uh, there's been hun you know, tens of mines through this region over the last 5,000 years, um, and it is a mining district, Andalusia mining district of Spain is a bit like being in Kalgoorlie uh, of Europe, so it is a mining district. Um, I'm just going to roll through this video, give you a bit of a sense. To the right, um, you have Seville. Uh, down to the south, you have the port of Huelva, which is where our, our product all goes to a, um, the blending facilities of um, Trafigura. An aero shot of the, of the uh, facilities, um, um, the plant facility is a 4.7 million tonne facility, uh, two, two main um, delivery processing units. It's had about $1.8 billion US spent on it. Over the last 15 years, it's been operation for 15 years. This is looking at the Aguas Tanitas ore body underground, a state of the art, world class technology, world, world class operators. Um, um, and probably from our perspective, what we see is a really great opportunity here um, to use good mining practices um, and to lead the business well. Very, very good people, very good capabilities, probably uh, could be led better, owned by a trading house and a sovereign wealth fund, probably not the most ideal situation. So it gives you a bit of a sense here, about a 50 million tonnes of in situ resources um, and a reasonably high uh, uh, reserve conversion, but we'll be doing more work on that. Further to the eight kilometres to the uh, uh, east, we've got the Magdalena infrastructure, um, another f f roughly 50 million tonnes. Now, these are all, all bodies averaging between 3 and 4% copper equivalent, and the global mineral endowment here is somewhere in the order of 5 million tonnes of copper. Um, we've got a global resource here of 150 million tonnes um, in this complex at this point in time, and we haven't actually done terribly much work. We've got some deeper exploration uh, drilling programs that would be on foot to look for some big extensions as well, because uh, we're quite excited about that opportunity. As we travel to the south, about 20 kilometres directly, we have this Sotiel mine, another VMS complex. Uh, this complex here, once again, somewhere in the order of 50 million tonnes of resources, very low conversion factor into reserves. There hasn't been a requirement by the previous owner to do that, and it provides supplemental feed to the mill, um, about 500,000 tonnes of copper a year, um, and into what is a capacity of 4.7 million tonnes. So, so much opportunity for us here in terms of increasing the uh, resource to reserve, or the reserve, resource to reserve conversion ratio, uh, but also from an exploration perspective. Here we see essentially our three uh, main mines, but what you will see is a couple of great uh, exploration targets, Conception and Ponderosa, and we're actually doing work on there and they're coming into our resource model, but a plethora of other exploration opportunities. Just want to quickly touch on Mateo, um, the uh, new project we're building in Botswana, the T3 open pit is in the mine. Uh, it will be followed by the A4 deposit eight kilometres away, uh, the expansion project that will take us to 5.2 million tonnes. Kalahari Copper Belt, we have, the, as I said, the dominant holding um, and it's a wonderful jurisdiction to go and operate in. Um, essentially, we are uh, expecting, essentially, to be in uh, turning mills, uh, a mill towards um, April or May of next year and commence production by June of 23. So full steam ahead there. Uh, in terms of uh, the facilities here in another home video, uh, this was in May when we were sitting on site um, for, for my last visit. Um, Parenti, our open pit contract, we let a $600 million US contract for a long period of time, a long-term contract. That enabled us to actually um, have Parenti who are doing a wonderful job on site to bring an at this project all brand new kit, whether it be mining fleet, uh, processing facilities, so every single thing that sits in Botswana at this facility is brand new. Uh, we expect to be there for many decades, as we do in Spain as well, and, and want to do it right from the beginning and making sure we've invested properly on capital. The other, we were very fortunate to lock in um, a significant component of all our capital expenditure elements. Um, so we haven't seen cost blowouts there, it's just been more so on the energy side. The processing facilities, this is uh, left to right, You've got the, uh, this is a few months old as I, as I said, but essentially, you know, world class construction, um, state of the art, very simple processing route, big, large, also expandable even beyond that 5.2 million tonnes, and what we will be doing here is be chasing big volumes and relatively speaking lower grade. Uh, we're running at you know potentially one to two percent copper grades is what we've seen. Uh, we do know our neighbour next door has six million tonnes of in copper endowment as well. 
processing, um, our accommodation facilities are up and running, 750 uh, person camp, state of the art as good as you'll find anywhere in the world, um, individual facilities, individual um, um, uh, you know, um, bathrooms and showers in your, in your own room, digital TV and all the rest of it, air conditioning, all the rest of it. So world class uh, set up here in Botswana. So that will be in production in 23, as I said. So from our perspective, uh, we've had a really busy 12 months. It's been a really exciting period. Uh, the platform that we've established is very much a platform that we can grow off. Um, we've been able to, we've planned it well, we've executed it well, and we're really looking to grow off that substantial mineral endowment that we've been able to assemble of order of magnitude, six million tonnes of contained copper. Uh, we see significant growth opportunities in terms of the, the exploration potential, both at Matza in, in, in Spain and also along the Kalahari Copper Belt, where we've got that dominant position. Um, and we're also positioning ourselves as a business that um, is able to continue to look for other opportunities further afield. Wonderful group of people that are working uh, very well and in very much an aligned fashion, um, and it's a very exciting place to be, so we're looking forward to the future. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Carl. Um, we do have time for questions, so is there anyone in the audience that would like to ask Carl a question? Just down the front here, please. You can just ask it, Keith. I, I can hear you. It's Black Butte. Black Butte in the US. Um, Black Butte, we still have the project in the US. Um, it, it is happening. It's, it's, it's a marathon, Keith, fair to say. So we permitted the project. It's uh, the Montana and Copper Project, Black Butte project is about um, 20 million tonnes of resources at about a 3% copper grade, order of magnitude, uh, 600,000 tonnes of contained copper, a couple of deposits. It has been permitted by the Department of Environmental Quality. It's been challenged. Um, the first court hearing, the judge, singular judge in Montana, has upheld for the plaintiffs to say that the department needs to do a little bit more work, and so it's gone back into a, a, a framework where further work has to be done. Uh, that process, we think, will be a 12 to 18 month process of doing further studies and work, but we're still you know, pursuing that project. Ultimately, um, we see the project as being, um, having the opportunity to be a value contributor. Um, and we'll keep working at it. But it, what's also interesting, it's the first time now, Keith, that we're actually doing some exploration because we didn't want to do any exploration before we at least had a, um, a mining permit, albeit it's now challenged. Uh, we're confident that the, the, the permit will be forthcoming in its, in its fullness in time, but it's, it's a long, quite drawn out process in the US. But we're not reliant on it. Thanks, Carl. Um, just one quick question from me then. Um, if we look at Matt's, uh, the operation looks self-sufficient, it's going very well. Just wondering if you could please talk to the mining skill set within Spain, um, sure. how you're finding labour productivity and how does this compare to Western Australia? Well, I think um, if I was comparing it, I'd say um, excellent really because what we, we do have, we don't have the competition, certainly we don't have the competition in that part of the world um, as we do see in Australia or Western Australia in particular. So access to um, really um, capable and, and, and very well-skilled uh, mining operators in a region that has just had a plethora of mining operations um, is high. So you've really got a really great workforce. Um, while some of Spain may have a siesta in the afternoon, sadly the people that work for us and in the mining industry don't, uh, they work their, um, their shifts. Uh, we have a three, three essentially eight hour shifts a day and people drive in, drive out. But a really good high level of expertise and competency level. Um, and, and for us, um, Digby, what's really interesting is um, we are the number one and dominant um, um, employer in the region. Um, so we've got, you know, the, um, the really good quality skill sets there. As I said, we're uh, just over an hour out of uh, Sevilla, so uh, we can draw from a great pool there, and it's a wonderful environment, and, and it enables a great family environment for people to live in and close to where they work. So um, it enables us to draw um, a very good workforce. And I think we account for something like 30% of the Spanish uh, extractive industries business, so um, we're a very important player in the region. That's excellent. Please thank Carl Simic, Sandfire Resources. Thank you, Frank. Thank you.